This is Grigory Perelman. He cracked a math problem that stumped humanity for a hundred years, then disappeared. No interviews, no money, no medals, no explanations, just silence. Some called him the smartest man alive, others called him broken, but the truth, we may never fully understand it. This is the story of the mind we couldn't reach. Grigory Perelman was born in Soviet Russia in a time when genius meant survival or sacrifice. His home was small, silent and cold, but inside something powerful was forming. As the world outside crumbled into routine, young Grigory started solving problems no child should even understand. And he barely said a word while doing it. Grigory never raised his hand, never smiled. But his math notebook? It was filled with ideas even the teacher didn't understand. They thought he might be copying from a textbook. Then they realized he was inventing new solutions. His mother recognized the gift early. She wasn't just proud, she was preparing him. In the Soviet Union, a Jewish boy with genius still had to fight for his place. She trained him like an athlete, in numbers, in logic, in silence. He learned to think faster than anyone, but not to speak faster. He entered one of the most elite math schools in the USSR, a place that shaped Olympiad champions. But while others discussed strategies, Grigory sat by himself. He didn't need to ask questions. He already saw the answers. One teacher said, he thinks like someone from the future. At just 16, Grigory Perelman represented the Soviet Union in the world's biggest math competition. He scored a perfect 42 out of 42, not a single mistake. Cameras tried to catch his reaction, he didn't flinch. While others posed for photos, he quietly packed his bag and walked away. Teachers began whispering about him in staff rooms. Not just how smart he was, but how distant, how unreachable. He never joked, never bragged, never really connected. One teacher simply said, he solved problems like breathing, but I don't think he ever needed us. Then, just like that, he was gone. No goodbye, no farewell ceremony. He stopped attending events, competitions, even meetings with professors. The math world thought he had burned out. They were wrong. Grigori hadn't given up on math. He was just walking a path the rest of the world couldn't see yet. And somewhere in the shadows, a world-famous problem was waiting for him. The world had forgotten about Grigori Perelman, but he hadn't forgotten about them. In the world of mathematics, one problem haunted minds for a hundred years. The Poincaré conjecture. It asked a question so simple even kids could hear it, but no one could answer it. If a shape has no holes, is it just a sphere in disguise? It sounds basic, but it shattered geniuses. Decade after decade, top minds tried and failed. Some gave their careers to it, others gave their sanity. Poincaré wasn't just a problem, it became a curse. People said it couldn't be solved, not by humans. Then came a whisper, there's this guy in Russia, no one's heard from him in years. In 2002, a quiet math server received a strange new paper. No journal, no press, just a download button and a name, Grigory Perelman. What he uploaded wasn't just math, it was the first serious blow to the Poincaré conjecture ever. 
At first, no one believed it. Could someone really solve it alone? Experts across the world opened the paper and froze. This wasn't flashy, it wasn't wordy, it was pure thought in raw form. They realized this man didn't just work hard, he saw the problem from another dimension. Top mathematicians scrambled to check his work. It took teams of PhDs almost a year to understand what he'd done. Every line held deep logic, no errors, no bragging, no shortcuts. Slowly, the truth sank in. Perlman had done it. The world wanted to see the man behind the mind, but Grigory didn't show up. No interviews, no photo shoots, no celebrations. While the world screamed his name, he stayed silent in St. Petersburg. One journalist said, finding him is harder than understanding his math. In 2006, he was chosen for the Fields Medal, the Nobel Prize of Math. Every winner in history had shown up, smiled, accepted the honor. Grigori said no, no speech, no stage, no spotlight. He said, I'm not interested in recognition. I know what I did. He had just done the impossible, but Perelman wasn't finished. What he did next would confuse and shock the entire scientific world. The proof was only one part of the story. The real mystery was what he chose to do with it. In 2010, the Clay Mathematics Institute announced what the world had been waiting for. Grigory Perelman had solved the Poincaré conjecture. The reward, $1 million, international headlines, global interviews. But Grigory didn't respond, not a word, not a single word. Journalists tried to track him down. They found an old apartment he shared with his mother. They knocked, they waited. He didn't come out. A neighbor peeked out. He lives there, but he doesn't talk to anyone. Even his phone was silent. One day, a journalist caught a glimpse. Grigori was thinner now, older, still alone. They asked, why won't you accept the prize? He said just one thing. I'm not interested in money. I have everything I need. In March 2010, he sent a message. I refuse the prize. That was it. No anger, no negotiation, just rejection. The math world was shocked, some were confused, others were angry. Professors from Harvard, Princeton, Cambridge, all tried to understand. Why walk away from a million dollars? Why avoid the spotlight after changing history? Some said he was a purist, others feared he was broken. Old friends remembered a boy who solved math like breathing but never smiled. One said, He didn't care about awards. He only cared about truth. Another whispered, I think he saw things we didn't, maybe things we couldn't. Some started to wonder, had math disconnected him from people? Even the Russian government tried to bring him back into the spotlight. They invited him to be honored with the president. He didn't respond, didn't attend. To Grigory Perelman, the world was too noisy and too fake. In one of his only recorded interviews, he gave a reason. I don't want to be on display, like an animal in a zoo. No one knew what to say. The world had built a golden cage for him, and he refused to enter. After rejecting the prize, Grigory Perelman disappeared again. No new papers, no more interviews, no lectures, podcasts, conferences, nothing. He stopped answering messages, stopped opening his door. For most of the world, he simply vanished. A journalist who once entered his apartment said it was like a shrine to thought. No luxury, no furniture, just notebooks, mold and silence. He hadn't touched the million dollar check, they said, but the math was alive in there, still breathing. Grisha always believed people didn't really care about truth, only about winning. He didn't want to play those games. He never changed. The world just never knew how to meet him. A Genius in Exile by Choice 
Some say Perelman vanished not just out of disinterest, but disgust. A team from China rewrote parts of his proof, claiming clarity. Perelman felt robbed. They are not able to see the whole picture, he said. Maybe he wasn't escaping fame. Maybe he was escaping betrayal. His ideas didn't stay quiet. They exploded across science. Physicists used them to understand the shape of the universe. Biologists applied his math to study the shape of DNA. Grigory Perelman may have left the stage, but his math never did. On the internet, Grigory became something else, a myth, a mystery, a quiet hero who walked away. Some call him the smartest man alive, others the loneliest, but no one really knows, and maybe that's exactly how he wanted it. He could have had anything, money, awards, power. Instead, he chose stillness. He didn't want to be worshipped. He just wanted to be right, and then to be left alone. Grigory Perelman solved what no one else could, and when the world came running, he walked away. Because sometimes genius isn't loud, sometimes it's quiet, silent, brilliant, beyond belief. He didn't disappear, he simply finished what he came to do. If this story moved you, even a little, please consider liking the video, especially our loyal subscribers who see it first. It really helps the algorithm share it with more people who might need to hear it. And if it didn't resonate with you, we'd still love to hear your thoughts. Honest feedback helps us improve and make better content. If you'd like to see more stories like this, you know where to find us. You can also reach out on social media. Links are on the screen and in the description. We'd love to connect. Thanks for being here. Stay thoughtful, stay curious.